Mexico City, Mexico, Chiavo and Hector Guerrero! That bell starts this tag team event between the Guerrero brothers and they are the pair dressed in the black trunks. Hector Guerrero is in the ring now, Chavo Guerrero is on the outside. And you are looking at the Houston debut of the Fabulous Ones, the Fabs. And the Fabs are Steve Kern and Stan Lane. That's Hector Guerrero. And right now, as he goes into some of his work to try to confuse the... He's trying to confuse the Fabs, and the Fabs are trying to turn it right around against them. Here you have the younger crop of the wrestling world at its best. The Guerrero brothers have been wrestling since they were just kids out of the cradle. And they could be considered a veteran team where Lane and Kern have been wrestling together for several years and doing absolutely great in all areas of the country. Here I, I, I'll tell you the way they are shaking this ring is the way it was shaken after the match that preceded this one, one between Terry Taylor and Dr. Death, and Dr. Death almost shook the ring apart after the match was over. He was unhappy about the whole decision. But now as the referee comes out to try to settle things here with the Fabs and the Guerreros, he's got Stan Lane in the ring with the Hector Guerrero, and as the pushing goes on, you can see who got the worst of it. Steve Kern started in at that time, but he didn't come very far. The grip now, the throw over by Kern was a, by Lane rather, was a good one and he's bragging about it to the fans. Now remember, if you're watching this program on Saturday night, I can tell you that tomorrow night at the Sam Houston Coliseum starting at 7 p.m., 7 p.m., we have a tremendous wrestling card in this Coliseum. Maybe one of the biggest of 1985 and most certainly the last, and now with the Tag team action continuing. I'll tell you that if you're watching this on Sunday morning, <clears throat> then you know that tonight the action will break loose at 7 o'clock. And our ticket office is open all day at 1919 Caroline at the corner of Pierce. Hamelock now for Hector Guerrero. He touches his brother Chavo, and Chavo comes in with the bounce on the arm that could just shake that arm right down 
into, into its socket. He saw the quick switch, and it was Guerrero who did it. Guerrero who comes in there to suddenly take advantage of the fast movement of uh, Stan Lane and to turn it against him. He did it. Twisting arm lock. And Chavo, former world's junior heavyweight champion and one of the game's best, keeps that double wrist lock on there tight. He knows there are a lot of things he can do from that particular position. And the fans are all of a sudden hushed waiting for Chavo to do it. And he got him down there by his own efforts and uh, comes up with a hammerlock. So it's Chavo's grip. And there's a quick touch. In comes Hector Guerrero. And Hector goes up in the air and down on the arm, right about the elbow, and lands with his 220 pounds in, in the proper place. We have a great crowd here at the Sam Houston Coliseum tonight, just two days after Christmas, and then two more days, and it will be Sunday, and we will have action again here in the Sam Houston Coliseum. Don't miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of the super cards with a couple of feud busters in the final event. The return of Ted DiBiase to get even with Dickie Murdoch and the big battle between Dickie Slater and his arch rival Hacksaw Butch Reed and the prize for Butch Reed will be that he will have a valet in his corner, the dark journey will suddenly be helping him out in his matches if he permits her to do it. But he's battling for control over a dark journey, something that has never happened before in Houston wrestling, I can tell you that. So, Steve Kern is inside the ropes and Steve Kern is just a little bit hesitant to go in there and get what his partner got. He's caught in a side headlock now by Chavo Guerrero, a man who favors that particular move and does it exceptionally well. Hit him solidly and hit him hard. Took him over and slammed him down into that uh, canvas. And here comes Hector. And Hector's going up and down and landing solidly on that arm. And both of these teams know how they, were, they can work together. Quick tag by Chavo and Hector may have been missed by the referee. At least that's what uh, Steve Kern on the outside is complaining about. Stan Lane on the inside is taking the hammerlock. He's in trouble. He's having his, his problems. On the card, Friday, it's a Sunday night. This Sunday night, tomorrow night, or today, depending on when you're watching this program. We will see Terry Taylor, who is going to be battling Killer Brooks. And who is Killer Brooks' manager? But Gary Hart. Wolf at himself, and he has returned to the Houston wrestling picture with a tough cookie under his wing. The Waxahachie bandit, and he can really wrap him up in behind, and Hector's in position. He wraps him up, and whoa, he was thrown off that time. And through the ropes and off onto the floor goes Stan Lane, and he hits the concrete, I'll tell you, it's hard to take, tell these fellows apart. That snakeskin design on those wrestling trunks that they wear, the same kind of hair, the same kind of beard, and the same kind of muscles. There's no question about that. In the other corner, we have the brothers, and the brothers are easier to tell apart than those who are not related. So in comes Stan Lane, 
And now the referee is questioning which man was in, which man was out. How do you tell? <laughs> exactly, how do you tell? These two guys are, are clones. So now there's a peace offer and there's not going to be a summit meeting before it takes place, I'll tell you. The fans are all warning Hector, wanting him not to fall victim to the, the, the effort. He's, he's willing. His brother tells him to watch out. His brother has had a little more experience than Hector. And Chavo is, knows, knows the trick and knows it well. A quick move by... Hector Guerrero, and he bends that hand back, gets it off off center, and pours it to him. Uh, oh, there was a quick change by Hector and Chavo Guerrero. You, you can see Kern on the outside as he held him, held him in there. Now as he pounds away at Chavo Guerrero, there's a quick doubling up. And they go after him. Hector's out of the ring, and you can see what happened to Chavo. Ten minutes have gone by in this battle. The man down is Chavo Guerrero. And as he starts to get up to try to get into a defensive position, he's got two men in there who are uh, heckling him with kicks and blows, and oh, did he run into a solid wall. He just cl was clobbered for sure that time, and as he, the referee now tries to get Hector out of the ring, the brother, Chavo, is catching it on the outside again. He's catching it from both men, and, and again, he comes over here to get the referee involved, and Chavo is taking a whipping in the corner. Hector is boiling mad. Hector is anxious to um, get over and to get his brother out of that corner. But every move that he makes, he's grabbed by two men and dragged back into it, and the referee has his back turned and can't see the infraction. There goes Chavo around the ring. Chavo off to take care of his brother, at least to stand guard over him. And the referee's trying to force him back where he belongs. Stan Lane and Steve Kern, the fabs, the fabulous ones, up in that ring right now. And they're being told off in no uncertain terms. Off on the floor, we've got Chavo Guerrero, and the referee was tolling a count. Here comes Chavo, poking his head up, and they're heading him for the ring where he can get in without getting knocked apart. This could be a, at, at least an opportunity for him, but he is still caught. And as Stan Lane follows him, he takes a clobber right at that throat. Not the open hand, he did it with the, with the edge of the hand, and that takes in the territory that can really choke you. There, the referee trying again to get uh, Hector back into the corner, and the, the two of them are after Chavo again, and this time the referee almost walked in on that pounding party they were having. Chavo having his troubles, and the Fabs pick him up and get ready for a driving shoulder breaker, and here, this is it. There's one, there's two, and there was two, and that was all. And Lane wants the, the f a fast count. Chavo in trouble as Hector races around the ring, tries to get hold of him, and he takes off after him. Now, as the referee takes hold of Hector, he tries to get him out of the ring, and Hector this time has learned his lesson. He wants to ta tag his brother. Here's a solid right to the jaw. And again, Hector... Chavo Guerrero caught him with one. Now Chavo got his first uh, 
clean cut call in, the, in that corner. So in comes Steve Kern. And Kern now takes over to give Chavo Guerrero more of the same while Stan Lane tries to keep the referee occupied. A backbreaker. And he dropped him solidly right across the knee. And right in the corner where he can taunt. He can taunt the the brother. And the referee is trying to keep one on one. And there goes Chavo Guerrero hurtling through the air and standing there waiting for him is Stan Lane trying to kick his head through the concrete. And Hector gets around that ring and starts taking after him. Driving wallop and Chavo's on the floor. Hector reaching up there to take care of him. You just keep in mind that we have wrestling here at the Sam Houston Coliseum. If you're watching on Saturday night, we have wrestling on tomorrow night, starting at 7 o'clock. If you're watching on Sunday morning, we have wrestling tonight. There it goes for the pin. There's one, there's two. And that sunset flip almost worked. And they're trying to keep him in the, in the ring. And remember, all day Sunday, our ticket office is open. It is open and it is ready to serve you. But whether you have your tickets or not, be at the Coliseum for what is going to be the final event and the biggest event of 1985. Chavo is the man down. He has been slammed into the barricade around the ring. And the as he paces up and down there, He's looking for the opportunity with that referee to get out of there and Hector gets around to get his brother up and get his brother into the, into the ring. So Lane catches it and so does Chavo. There goes Chavo looking for the opportunity and look who's keeping the referee out of, the, out of trouble. Caught him right square in the kisser. A beautifully placed kick. And Steve Kern trying to commit over that top rope. Lane is inside. There goes a good roll and a beautiful move by Chavo Guerrero. And the crowd goes crazy here as they uncork and start wailing away. Looking for that head crash and they found it. And the Guerrero brothers are absolutely in their element when they are cutting loose and ready to help each other along the way. A, an arm swing and right into each other, chest to chest, face to face. And they're trying to set up the one of the fabs. The one fab was the, uh, was Kern. And now they're trying to set up Lane. And there go the flying feet and the man down. Hector's on top. Hector's on top and the leap off the top rope, that leap for life and the fab is on top. There's one, there's two, and that's not the man who belongs in. That is not the man who belongs in. The fabulous one. The Fabs, 17 minutes was the time of the match. The Fabs have taken the match, but they took it with the wrong man on top that time. I can tell you, you can't tell those two fellas apart. The referee sure has a tough time in trying to tell them apart. The fans can't. I know that I had trouble, and the referee is making his way down the aisle to question the fabulous ones, but up in the ring we have the Guerrero brothers who have dropped this decision and obviously do not like it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have just signed another match to be added to the card here on Sunday night. And that Sunday night show starts at 7 o'clock here in the Sam Houston Coliseum. But many of you felt like we did that the, here in the Coliseum that something took place in that tag team battle between the Fabulous Ones and the Guerreros, and I firmly believe that the wrong man was in the ring at, 
at the time. Can you tell uh, the difference between us? Now, how can you honestly say that and look at us right now? Which one of us was the legal man? You I'm know, it doesn't test. matter which, which one, one of, of you was the, legal the man? was the legal man because I saw without a tag well, you might one man you get up and get but out. But as you know, and as all these people know, you wear glasses. Is that not right, Mr. Bosch? So what you see might not even be the truth anyway. Let me ask you something. Is this not the first time in the history of Houston sports and athletics that 25 women passed out when the Fabs walked to the ring? That's the first time ever. Well, I didn't get the last two. Well, let me tell you something. You know what it all boils down to is it looks like we're going to step into the ring with them again. Is that correct? On oh, well. Sunday night. <laughs> well, we that's sleep well more. tomorrow. Well, we'll sleep well. We'll sleep well tomorrow. We'll sleep well the next day. Because just looking at these thousands of idiots standing out here, you know, when they told us in Florida that if you're from Texas, you're supposed to be something big and bad. Well, there ain't nobody in Texas that's any bigger and badder than the fabulous ones. You know, we've got a history all over the world, not just in this lowly Texas. But you know something? I looked all over the record books. I looked in every wrestling magazine, opened up every book, went from page to page to cover to cover. Did I ever see Hector Guerrero or Chavo Guerrero? That sounds like an Italian sandwich, but the Guerrero walk, sandwiches. But walk in any newsstand anywhere in the world, walk in any major toy store, and you'll see Stan and Steve the Fabs, because, brother, we're like Coca-Cola. We're known all over the world. And any time, any place the Guerreros want to get in the ring again against Sunday top caliber, a Sunday night, night whenever, Sunday, Sunday Monday, Tuesday, we don't care, because as you well know, Mr. Bosch, we beat them. When we got darn well good and ready to beat them, we beat them right there in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. We'll be chasing keeping tabs on both of them here at the Coliseum on Sunday when they're in the ring once again. It'll be a show stealer, I promise you that.